Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now, as you probably know, Android uses the Linux kernel. It has done since the very beginning. So that poses us the question, is uh, Android just Linux on a mobile phone, on a smartphone? And of course the answer is yes. Well, actually no, well, maybe. Let me explain. Okay, so at the heart of every uh, operating system there is a kernel and the kernel is responsible for managing the resources of the hardware, the memory, the files and so on. Now I've got a whole video on what is a kernel and I really recommend you go and watch that if you need to know more details about the role of Linux on mobile, on the desktop and in servers. Now Android needs a kernel and the kernel it uses is the Linux kernel. Now, the problem is when it comes to asking the question, is Android just Linux, is that Linux actually means different things to different people. Or at this point, I'm gonna just interrupt and say about the pronunciation. Linux, Linux, I say Linux, deal with it. Now, basically, if you say, oh, my laptop's running Linux, what you probably mean is running a Linux distribution, which means it's a Linux kernel, and then a whole bunch of other tools on top of it, including the command line stuff, including compilers, including a desktop, including applications that come bundled with that distribution of Linux. If you're talking in the purest term, Linux is just the kernel, the Linux kernel. And that's the thing that Linus Torvalds wrote, and that is why it has that name, Linus Linux. That's where it comes from. And there's also this idea of this thing called GNU Linux, because Linux as a kernel is great, but it's actually completely useless unless there are some tools on top of it. Even a simple shell so that you can actually just type in a few things requires some of these other uh, external tools that Linus didn't write. Uh, the C compiler, which you need to compile Linux and so on, and they are all part of what's called the GNU tool chain. So some people like to call it GNU slash Linux. Personally, I don't like that idea because actually on a desktop particularly, we also use a desktop environment, KDE or GNOME. We use things like web browsers. So should it be called GNU slash Chrome slash GNOME slash KDE slash it? That doesn't make any sense. But the understanding is that Linux is just the kernel and a kernel needs user space tools to make it usable by everyday users. So if you're wondering, is Android just Linux? Well, it depends on what you mean by Linux. So here's a couple of reasons why we could say, yes, it is Linux. First of all, of course, it uses the Linux kernel. So when you boot up an Android phone, it's booting up the Linux kernel, a same or very similar kernel as what you would get on uh, desktops or on servers. Now to say something is Linux would mean it would be compatible with Linux on other systems. And to do a test, what I actually did was I took a Raspberry Pi 1 and I wrote some C code and I statically linked it and I copied that binary, it ran on the Raspberry Pi 1, printed out what it was meant to print out. I then took exactly the same binary and I copied it over to an Android phone and I ran it via the ADB tools and the same binary ran on my Android phone with no alterations and gave me the correct output. In fact, I was even able to take the Golang programming language from Google, compile a program of Golang on a Raspberry Pi 1, ARM v6 architecture, copy exactly the same binary over to an ARM v8 64-bit Android smartphone and the same binary RAN. So in that way, it's Linux. It's certainly not Windows, it's certainly not iOS, it's certainly not the kernel that you find in, um, in Mac OS. And it, and it ran, the, the, everything it needed to do, printing things out and everything, finding out system information, it ran on one to the other. So in that case, Android is Linux. But by the same argument, Android isn't Linux. Because for example, I did a special thing when I compiled those uh, programs, I used static linking. Now, static linking basically means that when you, everything that's needed for that program running is built inside of the binary itself. Now, normally on most modern operating systems, they use dynamic linking, which means the same code doesn't need to be copied again and again and again. So the code to concatenate two strings together doesn't need to be included in every single binary that's on our system. There's a library that contains that information. In fact, it contains loads and loads of functions and functionality that a program might need to do with files and to do with the operating system and to do with threads and to do with 
everything, memory allocation, everything you could possibly want. And basically when a program runs up, it starts, it says, hey, I need this library, I need this library, I need this library for me to run. That's what the DLLs are in kind of the, the Windows uh, 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 area. Now basically if you run, a, if you compile a normal program on a Raspberry Pi and copy it over to an Android phone, it won't run because all those DLLs, all of that runtime isn't there in fact, Standard Linux distributions use the GNU C library for its runtime, and basically on Android, Google write its own C library called Bionic, and they're not compatible with each other, You're binary compatible. You can't take an executable from one and copy it onto the other and expect Bionic to do the same thing as uh, libc. And actually it's true the other way around, you can't take uh, an app from a, a Android smartphone and copy it over to your desktop and run it and it just works. That doesn't happen. But having said that, of course, if you've got Chrome OS, which is basically Linux, uh, with the web browser stuff built on top, if you've got a modern version of Chrome OS, then of course it can run uh, Android applications. So you can actually <laughs> take an app, download it from the Play Store, in fact, and run it on your, your Chromebook. And I've, I've done that recently on my my Chromebook because it just became available for it. So in that sense, you can run Android apps on Linux and you, you can run Linux binaries on, on so. But the point of course here is that Android has its own stack, its own functions, all that stuff to do with the Java and the Java virtual machine and how windows are opened and how applications work and fragments and intents and all the things that make up uh, you know, Android apps has to be built into Linux distribution somehow, including Chrome OS or using some emulator to get it to work. So at that level, Chrome, uh, Linux and um, Android are actually two separate operating systems based on the same core technology, which of course is uh, the Linux kernel. So what does that all mean? Well, it depends on how you want to define Linux. Yes, they both Linux a desktop and a Linux server and uh, an Android phone use the Linux kernel. The GNU libraries that are there are not available on Android, but they are available on, uh, on Linux. Bionic, the C runtime library for Android is not what you get a standard on Linux. Things like the desktop, the Chromium, the Firefox, the browsers, everything you want, on, you don't get on, on Android. Of course, Android has its own stuff. It has its own frameworks, its own operating system. It has its own way of doing things. It has the Java virtual machine. It has all the stuff that we use to build apps and that isn't included in a standard Linux distribution. But if you're running Chrome OS, then you can have that stuff because they've brought it over from Android over to a Linux distribution. So what can we say? Here's my uh, kind of my definitive opinion. Yes, they both use Linux as they use the Linux kernel. Uh, no, they're not both GNU Linux in any sense whatsoever because Android is certainly not uh, GNU Linux. And thirdly, you could consider it to be a Linux distribution if it means an operating system that is created with Linux at the core and then a whole bunch of other stuff built on top. Well, that is what Android is and that is what anything like Red Hat or CentOS or Ubuntu or whatever, that's what that is. But their aims and their goals and what they're doing are different and at some point you lose compatibility between the two. Personally, I think it's great that our Android smartphones are using the open source Linux kernel. I've been a follower of Linux for, since before version one of Linux, and I think it's great that we can run this technology on our modern day smartphones. So I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. I'd love to hear from you in the comments, is Android Linux, yes or no? Don't start flame wars, but let's just talk about it because that will be really interesting. Please don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel and do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.